Hello everyone and welcome to Band Pro 2016. I'm here with Tim Smith from Canon. Uh, we're here at a very exciting, very busy Band Pro event, open house. Tim, thank you so much for taking some time to come over to us today. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Hey, um, you've been partners here with Band Pro for a long time and a really industry stalwart. Uh, tell me a little bit about what your thoughts are for the show today. This show that we do at Band Pro once a year sort of marks the passage of an entire year and it's a chance to kind of look back on what we've accomplished during the year um, and this particular what we've accomplished is this. This is our C700. And this was a real game changer for us. It's the camera that's going to move us from the B camera, sometimes the A camera, to a solid cinema production camera. I know there's a lot, a lot of innovation in it and we were kind of kidding before the segment um, not really kidding, but about the, the eyepiece, mm -hmm. even the eyepiece. Yeah. Very important uh, piece of the puzzle. Truly, it was um, just as important to develop an eyepiece that would be of the level of the camera. I think this is the best eyepiece on the business. Uh, it is very it's Canon specific. It'll work on our Super Mario Mark II's or this one, or the C700. But, you know, what we keep finding is that the worst, the worst image on the set is the one the operator has, which is wrong. It's just absolutely wrong. You know, the, the people over in Video Village, the wardrobe people, they all have these nice monitors to look at. You see these beautiful images. Every camera operator had to struggle with either looking at a recorder or a flat image or a bigger screen that's glaring up, and they really want a good quality eyepiece. And right. this really is it. I mean, separately, this is about a $6,000 eyepiece. The camera gets sold in different configurations, but in a bundle, we're kind of looking at about 35000 but the eyepiece, which is included in that price, would be about $6,000 separately. So it's not any small part of the camera. It's a big consideration. Well, take me back a little bit to the development phase for the camera. When did you guys start, and then when was it really, you said, oh, we got something we can run with here? Well, well we got into the cinema business five years ago last month. That was our fifth anniversary of the rollout of the C300 HD piece. Um, and this camera's sort of been in the works for that five-year period. The prototypes and mock-ups and designs, that's all about probably two years ago when you first start working on button placement, layout, different possible designs, things like that. Start working on what you need in the system in terms of battery connections and power, things like that. Um, we shot the first images with it in this country just a few months ago in a film called The Calling that Russell Carpenter, ASC, the man who shot Titanic, shot this beautiful demo film that you can find online uh, or see here at the show if you're around. But okay. we shot that first one with two prototypes. One of them didn't even have paint on it yet. So uh, they were pretty early on. This one's in pretty good shape, but this is actually also a prototype. Let's, let's get to the nuts and bolts. Let's talk about the output, because I think that's where this camera really starts to shine. Um, so it will record to or output up to 4.5K depending on your settings. But it isn't just a 4K camera. It does a beautiful 2K in 12-bit even. It'll do a, um, a standard HD as well. Everything but standard depth. So the camera kind of touches all the buttons of current production, whether it's, all the way, whether it's just narrative in HD for broadcast television or whether you're trying to hit the Netflix mandate of 4K for a Netflix show. It'll hit that as well. It'll actually go to 4.5K. Depending on your resolution, frame rates go all the way to 240 frames a second. Super 35 sensor. It comes in three different flavors. You have the EF mount, of which we have over a million lenses in EF mount that have been sold. You have the PL mount, the industry standard PL. Those two cameras are completely interchangeable, so you can buy either one and then convert the mount later if, as appropriate. Uh, and then coming down the road a little bit, we don't have the exact dates, but probably by summer, no later, there'll be a global shutter version of that which is a different sensor than what's in here, which will give you a global shutter. Um, one of the things we've already agreed to do, though, is if you want to get into this camera now and decide you want to go global shutter, for a couple of grand, we'll swap out the shutters for you, uh, the, the sensor to go to a global shutter. That's phenomenal. Yeah. From the operator's standpoint, you have a really unique feature on, the, on your side. I'd like you to flip over the camera if you're, oh, if the, you're try, not flip it over. Oh, okay, you flipped it over. It's all right. And so let's talk about the, this very unique hat addition to the camera it's really itself. It's, it's a remote controller because it will come off and okay. there's several different cable links where everything that's on the smart side is also on the dumb side and I can control everything from both sides or I can with a longer cable just bring this to the end of a jib arm or something along those lines and I have all the information that the operator would have and information is also in a lot of cases in the eyepiece 
and that eyepiece that we have has a joystick on it as well as programmable buttons. So without even taking my eye off the eye cup or from here or from here, I could change a frame rate or change my ISO or change my white balance, any of those things. It can all be done in lots of different locations. So we're actually uh, able to make adjustments at several different points along the camera, but you can also take, it's really interchangeable, you can take the handle off, not have the handle, you can oh. set it up in a really smooth, uh, cinematic fashion. The handle comes off, then you have a cheese plate on the top, you also have a cheese plate on the bottom, so when the shoulder comes off, you have all those touch points on the bottom as well. The camera itself really is just a block right here in the middle. Okay. Uh, it's about eight pounds for just that portion of it, but everything else can be taken off standard quarter 20, things like that. So okay. now on the back of this one, we have Go the ahead. Codex Recorder. Okay. Now this is sold separately for about $6,000. Uh, this is what allows you to get to the 4.5K um, okay. resolution and record raw information to the Codex Recorder. Without the recorder, everything gets recorded internally to the CFast cards, which are here. Okay. But that won't give you raw. You gotta go to the, to the codex for raw. You can do QuickTime or you can do the ABC HD to the CFast cards. Okay, so this, this camera here, you're really driving. You've made a determination that this is your cinema camera. I mean, I know there's other it's, versions, it's, but. It is definitely um, a whole new step for us, a different league, mm -hmm. but clearly it will play well in the cinema world based on what the needs of cinema are, but if I don't need to record RAW, then I don't go with this. If I'm recording in HD, that's fine to see fast. I can do quick times. Um, this particular configuration is really more geared towards reality TV right now, because I've got the rocker handle here and a built-in zoom. I could shoot an entire reality show and never change the lenses. Okay. So it's, it's, it's sort of all things to all people. We even actually made a B4 adapter for this. So you can even put B4 lenses on there. Speaking of lenses, I know you have a really nice lens on the front of this Oh, camera. the 1880. Let's That's, talk about this. Yeah, just this a particular lens you've not seen in the wild yet. We haven't shipped it yet. Uh, we announced it a little while ago, uh, quite a bit back. It won't be shipping for a little bit more this year, hopefully, you know, or first thing next year. The 1880, it's very reasonably priced at $5,500. 1880 4K cinema zoom, the handle, the zoom, it's all part of that same price point. So it's a really flexible ENG lens. This will only be available in the EF mount. There's no PL version of this one. Okay. Well, hey, I want to thank you very much for your oh, time. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, anything else you'd like to add before we move on? Um, I would say go online, take a look at the film we shot called The Calling. You can see at the Canon site, YouTube, the BTS. Russell Carpenter did a great job. It's a really very nice film. And uh, hopefully you'll find a reason to use our camera. Oh, great. Thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you very much.